Hello and welcome to All My Art and Soul. I'm Michelle Holden, the mixed media artist behind um, this abstract series. Uh, this is another 12 by 12, but this is part three, and this is the final stage of the third painting of this series of three. And as you can see here, um, I took it to the first, uh, sort of the middle stage in the last video, let it rest, and um, before I was going to make any further decisions. So I know I wanted to use the same kind of vertical elements as in the previous painting, so make sure you check that out. That was the um, uh, the, the video before the, the, there's this video, and then the next one before that, Anyway, it's, uh, they are all titled uh, 12 by 12, part one, two, and three. And I wanted to uh, make sure um, I added to this uh, really nice, quiet conversation, this lovely light-colored value, which is uh, Titan Buff. And I'm sort of bringing out, I've made the decision with those the blue line that if you saw the, uh, the the original older painting that I am painting over, there's three of them, and why I'm doing so is to show you how you can change anything, um, but still leave uh, nice elements that you like or that you that would add or colors, and then take it in a different direction. So we're going backwards to go forwards. And as you can see, I'm just really lightly holding this brush because I remember that's how I made those lines. So I'm echoing the same kind of, of movement. And I noticed too, as I was sitting here waiting for things to upload and uh, before I'm doing my voiceover like I'm doing now, there's a lot of motion, movement in this painting. I love it. And you know how it goes. Um, things are working uh, and we're into this intuitive process so sometimes um, when you get to really uh, know and understand the elements and principles and you know what worked before and you're just repeating them but you know in slightly different ways of course um, things happen and you don't really notice them until after you stop and of course spin out of that intuitive process so as I was letting it rest for a couple of days, a day or two, um, I love how when you just sort of walk by a piece of work or it's at the corner of your eye, different things catch it, catch your attention at different times, maybe because of the light or whatever. And I know I needed some more or I wanted some more orange or that ochre on that left-hand edge of that very blonde rectangle that is very textured. It's very heavy handcrafted paper and I love finding more papers like that and I can't wait to go to my art store to go on another paper hunt. Anyway, so that uh, stopped the eye from going right off that left edge and to go up, up to that half, um, well half curvy linear shape with the turquoise paper inside. And I know I was planning my series of little circles to go across, but I, but I knew what would work better is the similar value, just slightly lighter, not black, which I initially thought might work. And maybe it would have worked, but I would have come over them again with a, with a very thin layer of that Titan buff just to push them back. So we'll never know. Anyway, so um, that's what I'm doing now. And there's just a few things that I need to do in order to finish this piece. So um, I'm loving the blue circle. It's different, but yet um, what's in common between, and then of course there's where I work my shapes, it's so funny. I still have to get used to this hair dryer. I am not used to using a hair dryer at any part of my art. This is totally new and foreign to me. 
So, of course, when I'm in the zone, I forget. I've got these little pieces ready to go. And then, of course, as soon as I put the hair dryer on, they blow everywhere. So, um, I guess, you know, you just have to laugh. You just have to have a good sense of humor. So, as you can see, I, um, I knew that was working because this swoosh of uh, a neutral that's similar to the the big neutral area above works because it's so different from all the other cleaner edges and geometric shapes um, but what it has in common so you have to have a difference and then you have to have a commonality is its value to the to the rest of the um, um, upper area of the painting so I decide to push the blue back just a little bit, not a lot, because that wouldn't have worked, because what's the point of bringing that layer up? And as you can see, I have all of my little pieces ready to go. And that's what I'll do sometimes when, uh, well, it seems to be on a, a more regular basis. As I'm coming into the final steps or final little pieces of collage, I'll go, oh, that would look good. So then I'll cut it and I'll just leave it there. And it's it's in, a, in, in my studio, so I don't have to worry about, you know, doors being open, only if I'm going to use a hairdryer, of course. And then if I still like it a little while later, it's going in. So that's what I'm doing now. And I'm really loving, uh, now that I'm looking at it, the white on black row of circles, which are slightly bigger than the ones way up on top, which are, are white on the beige. And they're farther apart. Uh, notice how they're, they're closer and they get further apart. Just like I'm going to do with this vertical, neutral, long rectangular edge. Uh, so stay to the end because I'm, um, I'm going to make a few high contrast changes with uh, collage, mostly with collage. So <clears throat> that is yellow oxide there. And I have a tube of yellow ochre and a tube of yellow oxide. It is uh, way, it has way more saturation and sometimes I, I really like it more than um, the yellow ochre. And of course you could add a little uh, uh, nickel azo to your ochre to get it to that to that color. And of course, uh, playing around with uh, putting in some more orange above that shape. It just, it just needed more of that complementary orange to really make that blue curvilinear, uh, that long, narrow curv curvilinear part show up. And I love how I uh, fragmented it over so it makes the eye go across. So I'm really liking that. Yes, I finally found my little piece of this crackle. It's a crackle stencil. And that is just directly sponge painted on newsprint paper. And I'm right now I'm just seeing, okay, do I like that? I'm thinking I'm liking that better than the and I wanted it still to be black and white, but I'm liking it better than the black and white shape um, or paper that's underneath there. And I think I'm right in that. It's a little more different. And then I end up putting one more layer of transparent collage over that, which is a half circle. So those are those final decisions. And um, really at this stage, um, it had to sit for a little while because before I could make some decisions as to where the final, final steps or directions that it wanted to go. And I'm really liking what I've done with the blue. And I've been really wanting to put that in. So you can see I'm just slightly indecisive here as to which vertical line am I going to pick up. And it needed to go right to the edge. Just because... It's so similar, it's so similar to the beige above it, it needed to follow that line. Yes, 
much better decision, much better. So you see that piece went in, but it's just it's just looking just put together like a, an incomplete puzzle. And this really helps bring that, puts more of that beige or that neutral around the painting. So that vertical, long, narrow piece comes down and then your eye meets that. Beautiful black and white diagrams from encyclopedias, etc. Uh, dictionaries. Oh, they're so cool. So check those out whenever you're in your local bookstore or an old bookstore or a value village, anything like that. And you see it corresponds directly across from it with the crackled uh, in its coloring, but the difference is the pattern. So I'm really starting to get into this whole thing. This is so much fun. <laughs> so I knew um, that, of course, I love a piece of text in this particular, and, and I don't know if I'm going to always do that. It just depends what, you know, of course, what, what my message is and, you know, all those things. Um, I liked how this pushed those, uh, those X shapes back but you're, you still can see it. Uh, the same value is in in those, uh, in that paper with the text, with the black on the sort of raw umber pattern that's there above that sort of bridge shape. You have the arc. You have all of these commonalities, but yet differences. And now, oh, it's like, ta-da, epiphany. It's like, oh, it's so, it's so obvious, but yet it isn't when you're learning how to do these things. And so I let it sit for a bit. It had to dry. And now I'm back. And you can see there's new pieces of paper there that I might use. That um, raw umber, red, that was in uh, one of the three paintings, but just a little, a little bit. And here I am thinking, okay, Maybe it needs a piece of collage. That would have worked all right. But the edge is too too hard. It just it didn't and it covered up that interesting those interesting blue lines. So that's really not what I wanted. So instead, I decide, and I don't, I don't know if I do it here. No, not yet. So I'll wait. So there's that half circle. So I'm playing around. I have two of them. One's larger, this is the larger of the two, and one's smaller. And I think that's what I'm hunting around for right now. And it's, uh, see, I love how that piece of collage uh, looked with that paint. And there's my blue. Uh, that's, that's from the, that's the uh, previous uh, blow drying. Um, see, and then you put that blue in there, and it's like, oh, wow. So the same color blue is in those blue lines. There's blue at the bottom. There's a little bit of blue at the far, but it's more turquoise. It has a little more yellow in it. And here's where I'm playing with my, what, what needs to go. I love that, but it doesn't go with this particular painting. Now those other two paintings, as you can see my tables right there, and I have a wall, I'm facing a wall. I have those up so I can just glance at them and just see, okay, you know, what needs, what, what, what is different, but I need something in common if this is a series. Now here's the other half circle, which looks much better, smaller. So scale. See, and now I'm comparing, no way, no. The smaller one looks way better. It's so funny, I was so unsure. Yep, made my decision. And then it needed to trim because it wasn't a nice um, arc shape or half circle. So keeping that in there, thinking that goes there. I don't know why. Because when you like something, you like something and then you're, you, 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 then you're not being present. Now you're favoring something, but then you're not being present with what is there. I'm loving that paper. I'm going to save it for another piece. It, I never ended up using it. What I end up doing though, is taking that upper, uh, Titan buff, neutral, that, well, that's okay. But I'm glad now that I didn't do that. Oh, I just love that. That is newsprint. Uh, 
Was that made with my jelly plate? Yes. Rolling Titan Buff Yellow Oxide on the jelly plate. Now that's okay, but it doesn't really do anything because it's too similar. Right there, because of the other blacks that are in this piece, there's black on the bottom left, you've got the white circles on the black background, you've got a half circle, you have those black shapes underneath. Yes. So if I'm unsure about where to put a piece of high contrast in this work, black, see that's just more blue, more of the same, but I've got the shape right. So, so instead of, I know the black is working, so I'm going to put a little rectangle in there, which is very similar. I have the same kind of idea, perfect, with this alignment. So you have this vertical movement, and I'm going to emphasize that vertical movement with black pieces going uh, thicker from the bottom, thinner and farther apart. So it's uh, sort of emulating gradation and this upward movement. And I really like that. And of course, I'll come in with my um, black china marker and do my dashed lines, my vertical dashed lines coming from underneath that black rectangle down. So, just, yeah, so just emphasizing that blue and that curve. Don't really like, good. I'm glad I oh, made a mess. Okay. And this is why it's important, say if you do make a move like that and you want to change your mind. Um, this is why now, and see there's a little piece of blue there, but it, I rub it off. And you can cover that up with some other Titan Buff paint. But if I had enough of a layer of medium on there, gloss especially, uh, it doesn't really have to be gloss either. It can be uh, um, satin or, um, I forget, those words are eluding me right now. Uh, the paper, uh, it won't absorb it. So there's a little section of that paper that wasn't covered all the way. So the paint is going to go right in there. So there's some of, um, that's from a magazine, and I've used this piece. Oh. And what I've decided to do, I've been going through some of my own older images that I want, uh, especially black and white, like, the, like here, and less beige, more just really black and white. If you really like them, I'm scanning them, these pieces, so I can repeat them again, and uh, rather than just use them once and they're gone. Uh, especially my uh, sci-fi old magazines that are rare, you're not going to really come by those again. I know it. So uh, I'll scan them, and then I can have them to use on laser paper, or I can make skins with them. And uh, I'll be, uh, there's a whole bunch of skins that I want to make. Uh, because I also want to use images as skins, which is a, uh, using the medium, and I'll sh I'll be sh I'll be demonstrating how I do that, and it's it's pretty common. A lot of artists use it, and it's just it's just a more interesting way to put images in your work, but as collage layers. So there goes that circle. It's been sitting there for a while. Yes, I'm having a soda. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that the position of where that black rectangle is is just it's just perfect. And of course, there's my uh, dot uh, set of six dots. So I'm going to put that on a slight angle rather than rather than have it perfectly vertical or on a plane. And uh, then I'm going to cover it with a little bit of Titan Buff. So just push it back a little bit. So what am I working on down there? Yes. Uh, thick um, scrapbooking paper. I love going to the scrapbooking section and getting uh, particular color combinations or colors, and I'm just going to cut, cut them in sections, of course. There's that orange. That orange is in the other two paintings, and, I, and I'm looking at them right there, and I'm going, oh, maybe I need to put some of this in. And there is enough in the bottom so there is that common thread, but I don't end up doing it because now it's just like, boom, it's just too bright, too bright. It overpowers. 
Um, okay. So I'm pushing everything down because as it dries, sometimes your collage pieces uh, at the beginning, they didn't bubble, but uh, they're starting to now as the fibers uh, tighten up, some are, loo you know, as they dry. And, oh yes, so I'm making sure that blue is off. This might be the moment where I'm just covering. Oh, I see what I'm doing. So here's, yes. So I decided to, well, why don't I bring that same area and I'm trying to match it. And of course, I want to still emulate um, more of the yellow oxide going towards the right near that rectangle and coming lighter going to the left. So just playing around with that. So then I rub it off with a cloth or I take that right in that area and maybe bring that. So I don't wanna, I love the color of this, of this piece of uh, rough paper and even slightly lighter, it's looking better. So very similar value, but it looks better slightly lighter, I guess, because it's raised, embossed, I guess, it's raised texture. And then I'm trying to make, gradate those edges so they blend uh, above and below where I'm working, and that's looking, oh, looking much, much better. And I don't know if I rub it with the cloth or, yes, drag some more of that lighter color back and soften the edge where those little polka dots are, which is the only spot left from the original, where I left, where I left off. And I'm really liking that I left that curvilinear um, shape to the left that's cropped with that little piece of turquoise and in the end, I add this uh, little bit of blue paper that's the same color as the open circle shape above the black rectangle. Okay, now this is really coming to the finish line. Yes, so just cleaning those edges up. And you know, when you're coming to the end and you're starting to do things like this, cleaning up edges, things are coming together, um, you know you're in those final stages. So looking at that little textured piece, that sort of half curvilinear, which is really, um, what was it? Oh, needlepoint. Needlepoint, some kind of, you know, where you sew on. And then the, the, uh, the burlap-y kind of piece is, is a, a rug hooking where you, you know, you do all your work on. And I've got a ton of that. And of course, I'm only gonna use it in little pieces, at, at least at this point, who knows? But I really love the, the color and how it picks up the same color of the paper with the black pattern on it. And as I'm, and, and why this is looking good as well, this, this orange underneath is because you have it over on the right and you've extended that orange, that's, that, that's sort of a swoosh of atmosphere in behind. Now I notice there's some blue on that paper which I do uh, recognize and rub off. And so it's behind and now you've got things floating. So now you've got all these inter, intermingling layers. And uh, I love that. So that's, that's the thing I've been going for. And as, as I work towards that, it becomes clearer. And when you're, you have clarity, your work is easier. And yeah, so get that out of there, Michelle. There we go. Okay. Oh. So those stand out. So I'll just push them back a little bit with a little bit of uh, similar value. And I'm just cleaning up that blue that was in there and making sure that nice, much lighter value is showing. Yes, and down there, got a little bit of yellow and I don't like that. 
yes. So this this rectangle needed to needed to have an equal value on it to make it stand out. And then that orange goes behind it. So you have things in front, things in behind. So there's a whole bunch of layering going on. Oh, okay. So that little piece at the top, I'll just tear it. So I just tore it off. And then I use sandpaper to clean up all my edges. But you have to be careful too. You don't want to um, hold your sandpaper over. You want to over the edge because you know how delicate paper can be. And it depends what kind of paper it is. So you can tear, it can go past, but you know how these things can be fixed up and covered up with, um, um, with the same value of acrylics. So I know what needs to happen. Oh, here I'm going for some more orange, really. Okay then, probably that shape down below, it's been bugging me. There's so many layers on that thing. <laughs> there I go again. <laughs> But it does end up looking really cool. And I end up just brushing some yellow pastel, which you can see my little my little uh, yellow, my little cup of pastels up there. I have a great big selection, but I want to get some fresh ones, some different colors, uh, brighter. I think, uh, I think pastels work better um, when their hues are, are stronger, when they're more saturated because I just like to put little piece, little lines in. Then of course, you've got to make sure you cover them again with a clear medium. It can be matte, satin, or gloss. I like gloss just because things are really super smooth and it's sealed. Yeah, so I'm just, um, you know, um, lightening that. And here I go with a little stronger orange in there. But I don't want to get too strong. See, now the eye is sort of staying there. So I don't know if I keep that or lift some of that off with my cloth. That's okay. Um, it's not bad. Um, now we've got some different oranges happening. And next I'm going to be adding, this is the black scrap booking paper. You know, uh, you know, for your background. So I love it. They can just buy them in packages of 10 or so. It, for me, it lasts a long time because it's a nice solid black. Yes. So I'm just getting the width right. And I don't want, want it the exact same width. I want it slightly smaller. And now I'm going to cut them uh, thicker and thicker each time. I want an odd number. So I'm going to go for seven here. And I'm going to start thick at the bottom, work thinner upwards, and spread them apart more and more as you go. And that will uh, emphasize or create a sense of movement. Oh, loving this, especially with that contrast of that black rectangle next to it. And, it's, and it becomes quieter as you go up. Love it. And you can see all these lines. You see how you have the alignment of the open uh, blue circle shape with the rectangles and all going down. So there's a line. There's a line from these. You have the line of the white circles going across horizontally, the white on black ones below, and of course the black lines at the very bottom on top of the turquoise shape. And inside the turquoise shape, you have fragmented it. And so there's a hint of horizontal, vertical, I mean, vertical. And just making sure, though, that they're straight. Straight enough. I don't want them absolutely perfect. But if they were crooked, um, your eye would catch that. And it would stay there. So I hope I put them on straight. I think I did. And lining them up. There we go. And I'm looking at the other painting. Um, I, don't, I don't remember right now if I did the same, but I know that I have similar. Oh, it's a piece of uh, that rough paper, which is the 
really blonde rectangle on the left here. And I just cut it so the, um, the ridges were horizontal and put that big piece in, painted it black, no, blue first, and then went over it so many times and then sanded it. And that's what created those, um, those horizontal lines. So making sure your cloth is clean, but you know, some days that's just how it is. So then covering each piece with enough um, extra heavy or heavy gel gloss medium. And really liking what's happening here. So if you're really liking um, these little painting journeys series, um, stay with me. Um, we're going to be, uh, I'm going to be taking you on a lot more, um, a series of two larger 24 by 24, like I said, three from scratch of these 12 by 12 panels, right from scratch. This is going to be the next series, but I'm going to be doing, um, um, a few abstract art journals, uh, journaling pages, experimenting with different layers just to see what differences we can get with the combination of the different layers now that we know what kind of layers we like. And there's those little lines that I just love to put in. I don't know where I got those. Is it, they, just, they just need to go. They just need to go there. And they're the only little ones like it. But I love it. And so as I come to the end of this um, stage of this painting. Um, I let it rest for a couple of days, a few days, I believe. And I wasn't sure about the black square or rectangle, I should say. Um, but I really like always having this alignment of some kind. It's just, you know, there's a lot of meaning in that for me personally. And I noticed that it needed just those final little pieces of detail in, um, in this area uh, with the similar values, uh, light on light and, you know, like the quiet voice, the quiet, um, what are we calling it? Um, yeah, just that quiet quietness but with detail so I like this little piece um, it's just a just a scrap a leftover but I was thinking of something that small in here just to help move the eye around without interfering with the overall composition that I like so this little piece you've seen me play with this um, curvy linear or half uh, curved shape. Um, I know it needs to be lighter, uh, but I'm playing around. Do I want it to be more saturated in a uh, Hansa, yellow Hansa, or lighter orange, or an ochre? So that's what I've been playing around here with. And then I noticed it could use, or I thought it might need a little bit more something over here. So that would be more yellow, bringing more of a beige or that neutral, but I don't think it needs any more neutral because I think we're good throughout the whole piece. So I was thinking overlapping uh, the, a transparent half circle where you would still see yeah, I really like that. See that um, crackly kind of pattern underneath or a slightly different orange with a quarter or so of a circle, but still emphasizing that circular shape throughout the painting. And I'm at this moment, I'm still liking both equally so I'll just keep switching this back and forth until I come to that decision. 
and I know I, I cut this this circular shape before and was going to put it up here but it looks perfect here in that it's very similar in value but it also quiets down the pattern and just pushes it back a layer which that is exactly what I was thinking but I was going to take down sort of this smudgy transparent um, Titan buff and move it down a bit. So I just might try that now just to see which might look better. So let me just get that. So it is um, yellow ochre. Um, with mo more unbleached titanium. That's what this is. So let's just give that a little try. I hardly need any. So I want the same. And this has a nice coat of medium on it so that if it if it doesn't do anything great I can just wipe it off similar just needs a little bit more it's not exactly the same but that's okay and I think I'll go across that blue cleaning up the edge here just to get a really good look at it so I might just bring this in so I'm going to use the the shorter edge just so I can do a little scraping and I don't want it going over there but this is where you can use your left hand or your right hand. Okay. So just picking that up a little bit. I think I'm liking it. Not liking this. don't know if it's helping or hindering the piece. So now I'll just wipe it off totally so I can go back and see. You know what? I think I like it, but I'm only going to bring it down so far. Just a touch. Maybe it's straightening out the edge that it needed. I'm noticing that it's not the same and it's bugging me. But, okay, now we're also going to go through with some stain. And here I am looking around in my studio and I have it right here at my table. So, uh, as we've mentioned before, the Quinacridone Nickel Azo Gold is the best for that. And of course, I want to warm. <clears throat> but I'm going to also use a little bit of raw umber. 
just for this last, these last little touches. And I'm only going to use water. I'm not going to add an, uh, any more medium to these. So it's very, very, it's very subtle. Okay, that's it. Probably all I need. I'm going to use a wider brush though. <clears throat> so that's very orange as you can see and I think over here would be great even higher up Yes. So I don't want it that strong, so I'm just going to dab that out a bit. And noticing I'm getting lighter as I go over to the left, so I don't want to interfere. That would definitely be a total switch of what I've planned to use or to do compositionally. I was wondering if this would look better warmed up a little bit. That's too much, so I'm just going to rub some off, but it just is enough. And really having that layer of um, medium over your papers. And as you can see, I like it though, where there wasn't, or maybe I rubbed it earlier, it's more absorb, it has more absorption. So then it's going to, but, it, but I like these imperfections, which is pretty cool. Now, what about this area? Coming lighter as we go up it does so that gradation helps a little bit but I like these two to be slightly different I'll rub some of that off okay I just see in this edge it needs perfect it just needed that little dab okay Oops, I do not want it over there. That's too much orange. Okay. Oh, thank goodness. There. Okay, and we can bring it, lighten it up a bit more. Okay, that's it. That's all we need. So now I'm just going to paste these little pieces in. Here's a piece of blue that I think. I was playing with, would it look good here? It sort of interferes. So I want the eye, something more up near the top. So I'm just going to finish putting these little pieces in. And I I do think I like this transparent half circle to go on top, but I notice this paper is lifting, so it needs a little bit more medium. And I'm going to keep it so you can see that little piece of orange under there. That's very interesting. I really like that. And I really like this circle here. You're going to be able to notice it a bit more. And I like, I'm not sure if I like that stain coming down, but it did add a little more interest to that surface. It made the edges 
uh, softer. So I think I like that. I think I'm going to put a little, one more layer of this gloss on this piece here. <clears throat> and around. Attach the blue little piece. So it's picking up this blue over here. And that's now I've got the three happening. Yes, there was this there, but I just think it emphasizes it more. Plus the blue down below. I'm thinking it may or may not. If I add a little bit more blue, I think there's enough. And it's spread around enough. I was thinking of a red, but no, it's too, it's too alien to all the other things that are going on. So I just finished watching another series of videos, um, finishing layers, finding shapes, um, not making any decisions. I love that. The, the, how the way uh, she puts it. Uh, her name is Judy Woods and she's uh, I think uh, from New Zealand and um, she was uh, in the CVP program with Nicholas Wilton and has just broken away on her own and just incredible. So it depends which stage of of your art process that you're in and um, how on what we get from uh, and I remember I used to watch her way before I even knew what I was doing I didn't I didn't know you know uh, stages of the process um, marks when to make moves when to make decisions how to go backwards and all of that so I'm just going to so I hope you check her out but please come on back here <laughs> and uh, we're just going to keep on going. So as you can see, I just anything with a different color. See, no, I'm not liking that. But, you know, I just rub that. This is very textured. It's like a burlap texture. It's not the same material as this, which was that rug hooking. I love this stuff. So you have this neutral and this neutral. And this neutral all the same value but three different um, materials and shapes but yet the one thing that they have in common is their color or their value so let's let's take a look at why this last painting of the series of three 12 by 12 on panel uh, and why I chose to uh, work on these older paintings that were sitting um, and where they ended up in this end of this journey. So I'm really loving this, the commonality between the value, but it's, it takes away from all the horizontal I love these are wide and they gradually get thinner so they make the eye go up or down depending on where you go. These horizontal lines uh, are just pieces of black paper going across. Let's make sure you can see them. Okay, I'll just move that up and do some light adjustments. So you might see the light change and that's good because now it's brighter. So I'm always trying to keep that that's my camera and my phone attached to my my um, my little camera, which I love. And so we have white on black, no, white on black, black on white, black and white, black and white, curvy linear, curvy linear, and it's even in here in this this bridge diagram, which I love, and then has a lot of symbolism. In my work in this particular series I love how this and it's a little tacky right now so I'm not going to touch it but it'll dry shinier I loved how I had the blue lines underneath brought them up 
And I love how I left this faded. That's the only piece. If you remember where we started, oh, and here. The shapes are still there. Remember when it had just polka dots and it was all a blue, this whole beige area was blue. So I did end up keeping that. I just knew that part of that had to go in. Then I had this R-shaped uh, black area. I love the uniqueness of the shape, but I didn't want it to disappear, so I just made it a layer. I pushed it back. And then, of course, I'm liking this blue, and then my little dots, and I love, I knew these little uh, circles, which I made with my little copper pipe. This edge is, is, is wide, so, and I love how they're all imperfect. And you have this beigey one in the back, so you have overlapping, you have this texture, there's line, the X's are still there, but they're not, you know, in your face. There's words, and it says, a legacy of back-breaking toil and the turmoil. So, I think we can all relate to that. Uh, bridging, bridging together, whatever you want. You know, and I don't really like explaining my work, uh, but I thought, well, you know, why not? So that is this series of 12 by 12 mixed media abstracts, um, a painting journey, and um, I hope you enjoyed this little journey. And we're going to be moving on creating uh, multiple paintings at the same time, working in a series. So I'm going to be working in a series of many more. And please remember to like, subscribe, and share. And I will see you in the next video.